what experts are getting wrong about the thyroid and the adrenal connection. You know, there's a lot of experts out there saying, all you need to do is heal your adrenals and your thyroid will magically get better. But the reality is the thyroid and the adrenal glands, they play together, they need each other. We can't just treat one and ignore the other. That's not even fair. And it's not gonna help us feel better. We need to address both at the same time. Now, the reality is, is that the adrenal glands actually need T3. So the adrenal glands produce cortisol, which is a hormone, and cortisol needs T3 to function. But T3 also needs cortisol in the right amounts daily. So if you are completely stressed out and you're running on fumes, chances are your adrenal glands will eventually just stop producing enough cortisol. And then your thyroid, as it's converting that inactive thyroid hormone T4 to the active thyroid hormone T3, will have a really hard time with that. And then we will see you in a hibernation mode state, in a fatigue, gaining weight, losing your hair kind of state, that hypothyroid state that none of us like. So in order to get out of that, in order to improve T4 to T3 conversion, in order to give our bodies exactly what we need, we need T3 and cortisol to play nice together and to be in the proper amounts as they work together. If your adrenal glands have been basically beaten up over years and years of constant stress, they're not going to produce the right amount of cortisol. There's no way. When we bring in the right thyroid treatment, i.e. a little bit of T3 or a lot of bit of T3, then your adrenal glands light up and they say, okay, with this T3, we can now produce enough cortisol. Now I know what you're thinking, but wait a minute. I think I have high cortisol. Everyone tells me that the reason why I have belly fat is too much cortisol. And we start taking all of these supplements to lower our cortisol. But here's the thing. Yes, high cortisol is an issue, but you don't know until you test. If you do have high cortisol, and we test you and we see, yep, you're right. You're just pumping out that cortisol all day long. What that high cortisol is going to do is raise your blood glucose or your blood sugar. You're gonna store fat and it's gonna hinder that T4 to T3 conversion. So we can see that we want cortisol, it's kind of like Goldilocks, not too high, not too low, but just right. And when cortisol is just right, your thyroid thanks you. T3 can work with cortisol. What about the other way around? What if your thyroid's in the tank? Your cortisol looks pretty good, but thyroid is struggling over here. Then we move over to the thyroid and we say, okay, our adrenal glands are working just right. No, we're not pumping out too much and we're not making too little. But because the adrenal glands are working well, then that leaves us to focus on your thyroid so that you have just enough T3 to give you a metabolism, to give you energy, to help you grow your hair. So we can see that the two play together, but we can't just focus on one. We can't just sprinkle fairy dust on your adrenals or put you on some adrenal healing protocol and expect your thyroid to just magically work better. We wanna look at both, we wanna test both, and we want to address both at the same time. And that ultimately will help with your blood sugar and your energy. Now, how does blood sugar, energy, adrenals, and thyroid all play together? When we are looking at your blood sugar, we look at glucose, insulin, and A1C, and we want you in the optimal ranges for those as well. So when we're looking at glucose, we're actually measuring what your blood sugar is right now. Maybe you've heard of a continuous glucose monitor. You see people walking around with something on the back of their arm, this little round disc. Those people are actually measuring their blood glucose through the day. So everything that they eat, even stress levels, they're seeing what happens to their blood sugar as they move through the day. Now that is a great measurement to look at and we really wanna stay below 120, even after eating. We also can measure something in your blood called hemoglobin A1C. This is a three month snapshot of what your blood sugar has been doing. So it really doesn't lie. If hemoglobin A1C is high, then either stress or you have been eating the wrong things to raise that blood sugar. And then finally, we look at something called fasting insulin. 
We want that fasting insulin below a six. No, it doesn't matter what the standard lab value range says. It goes way too high. To be healthy, to be fit, to lower your inflammation and to help your thyroid work better, we want that insulin to be below a six. If it's above a six, that tells us that you are insulin resistant. Now we can have dysregulated blood sugar. We can have an elevated A1C. We can have an elevated insulin level because we're stressed out, because our adrenals aren't functioning well, or because our thyroid isn't functioning well. So you can see the importance of addressing each and every aspect of our health. You can see how blood sugar and cortisol and the thyroid all work together. And you can see why we can't just address one specific marker. We can't just address one specific function of your body like the adrenals and expect your thyroid gland to work at its best. We have to look at all of it, examine all of it and put that together for you so that you can look, feel and perform your best. And so your thyroid can perform at its best too, because ultimately that's what's going to reduce your symptoms and make you a happy human being and make you the badass human that you're meant to be.